everybody, and a very warm welcome to the Blue, Interna the Blue Mountains International Hotel Management School's 30th anniversary special webinar event, the Global Perspective Series. My name's Gareth, and I'm one of the success coaches and industry consultants here for our school. And in the spirit of reconciliation, Torrens University Australia and the Blue Mountains International Hotel Management School acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connection to land, sea, and community. And we, of course, pay our respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait peoples here today. So it's our third episode, and we've been on a journey to date that's taken us from New Delhi through to Singapore and down into Southeast Asia. And we're carrying on our global series with us being in conversations with senior hoteliers from five different countries discussing how their destination and hotel are preparing for the post-COVID operations. Focuses on rebuilding and skilling their workforce while considering how innovation successfully introduced over the last 18 months may become part of the new way of life. We're going to be hosting a Q&A at the end of the session, so please feel free to insert any questions that you've got, and we'll get to those at the end of the chapter of today's event. So this week, we're off to the Arabian Peninsula, to the shores of the Persian Gulf, lying, one, lying what is arguably one of the most innovative and fascinating cities in the world, Dubai. Our guest this week is another, one, is another one of our wonderful alumni, commencing her career all the way back in 2002 during an industry placement she did at Daydream Island. An opportunity then beckoned in Dubai with JA Resorts. She was going to go there for a short stint. 17 years later, she hasn't looked back. The majority of which with those 17 years have been with Marriott International, in which she now holds the role of Cluster Talent Acquisition and Learning and Development Manager overseeing a portfolio of six hotels, which is just about to increase, of which some of you can see here on the screen. Mrs. Lena Willoughby, Sabah here. Good morning. Sabah Noor. How are you? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for that introduction. Pleasure, pleasure. Thank you. All the hotels in one picture. Yeah, good to put everything together. It's amazing what we can do with a bit of uh, PowerPoint, etc. So, Lena, um, look, thank you first and foremost for, for accepting our invitation to, to speak today. And I mean, I, I guess to kind of, for everybody that's, that's online at the moment, and those that are joining us as, we, as we're kind of getting underway, would you mind kind of, first off, can you give us a quick kind of day in the life and overview of what your current role is and, and what, you, what you love about that role? Yes, certainly. The day in my life at the moment uh, starts actually very early, usually around 4.30 when I go cycling my bike. <laughs> Uh, that's an early morning start um, and then I usually come to the office around 8, 8, 10 and we have a morning briefing at 8.30 where mm -hmm. the entire HR team, my team is part of the HR team and I'm reporting to the director of HR for our cluster. Um, we all discuss what we're going to do today, like today we discussed how many people we will have for induction on Sunday, different things that are happening, what is everyone doing. And then we go off on our different tangents. Um, I work in different hotels. So you said there is six hotels open at the moment. And I usually sit in uh, three different locations. So every day is slightly different where I sit. And the people that are different people from my team are in different places as well. Uh, catching up with them, seeing the managers around and usually asking me, where is our staff? We need more staff. Please hurry up. That's the usual conversation at the moment. Um, and um, then hopefully finish around nine, uh, sorry, not nine o'clock, six, seven o'clock. Um, in between is also a lot of learning and development, um, which is also part of my role. That is, I have two managers, assistant managers there that are assisting me in each of the complexes. And um, that keeps us busy because training is still a big focus um, as well. Mm. So it's usually a very busy day. I try to make sure to have lunch because that is important, um, but it's certainly very hectic, but interesting. What I love about this role, you get to see so many people as well. Talent acquisition, I've only started that role in March this year. And when they asked me if I was interested in doing that, I said, yes, but it's a very scary job because you're sending offers to people that makes them happy, but you're also asking them to change their life most of the times. And it's a big decision to make. Um, and uh, I've gotten used to that, sending out offer letters and getting the response. But uh, it's certainly a part that 
I still enjoy doing because generally people are happy to receive those offers. And with learning and development, it's watching those people that I've just hired grow into new roles. Um, but certainly if you can see the development, it's something that I really enjoy about that role. And there's, I mean, especially with Marriott at the moment, I mean, there's been so much with Marriott. I mean, we, we see it every day on LinkedIn. There's all sorts of amazing innovations, and especially over the last 18 months where Marriott really has just kind of taken everything to a whole new level. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, really kind of looking to highlight themselves as being the number one employer within our industry globally, which has been, you know, really, really incredible. And I think even, even in Australia and all of the development and everything that's, you know, that, that's happening down this part of the world in particular, I mean, along with IHG, Marriott's the fastest growing brand uh, here, here in the Australasia region at the moment. So it's pretty, pretty incredible. Um, so, yeah. I mean, we're talking, you know, we're talking about regions. And I mean, let, let's talk about Dubai. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think today we want to kind of, I think, we're, you know, we are going to talk about what, what COVID has done. And I'm, you know, I kind of, before I, I you know, I, I ask you from your end, just to kind of set a scene a little bit, I'm, I'm going to rewind the clock back to February this year. And, you know, the incredible team over at STR Revenue, whom we've all followed over the last two years. Um, and, in, and in an article that they published on the 12th of March, and it's on, it's on the STR website as well for the students that are on if they want to go on there and, and have a look at a bit of a resource, et cetera. But in that article on the 12th of March, it stated that as of the 22nd of February, Dubai's occupancy on the books is trading slightly behind 2020 levels in metric. Between March and April 2021, Occupancy on the books for the market remains at 10 to 20 percent. And beyond those months, the metric stays below 10 percent with only occasional lifts. Dubai is still set to host Expo 2020 from the 1st of October 21 through to the 31st of March 2022. There is currently little to no impact for that period as of now, with the highest level for Thursday, the 21st of October 2021, so tomorrow at 7.2%. We then jumped to May and Ramadan, where the Middle East's highest Ramadan occupancy across the region was at 53.1. So that's in May. So that's in the space of three months, it has already gone up 50, you know, up 50%. And we saw that in other key markets with Ramadan and obviously with Eid, et cetera, during that same week, Sharjah, Doha, Abu Dhabi were all sitting above 60%. And then kind of right hot on the hills was Jeddah, at 58.6 and Dubai as a, as a city kind of average was at 59.7. Forwarding the clock to now, to the end of September and October, some hotels are now reporting an occupancy rates of over 90% and over. And it's a sign that guests, tourists and residents are not only returning to their pre-pandemic habits, but moreover, the fact that the thing that everybody has been so waiting for in Dubai, Expo 2020, it's alive. It's well. And I know that in our chat yesterday, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of very interesting stuff that you mentioned there. Um, but I mean, if, if, if I, I mean, it just looks, it's a hell of a ride. And I mean, it just looks incredibly fascinating to kind of see it from, from down here and to see that. So I guess what, what on the ground, you know, what, it, what, are, what, what are you seeing at the moment within Dubai? Dubai's back. <laughs> we have uh, that's that's what I'm seeing and uh, just looking at our occupancies in all our hotels today so the Meridian Dubai Hotel and Conference Center where we have close to 600 rooms we were on 100% last night we will be 100% tonight um, we have opened two hotels aloft and element Dubai airport which is next to this the Meridian Dubai Hotel and Conference Center on Friday we are already on 60% occupancy. And uh, we have two beach properties that are, um, it's one resort and we are also running above 90% occupancies at rates that we've had last time in 2015 or 16. So Dubai is back um, and having had the conversations, I know not everyone on the call is in Australia, but uh, Dubai is very much back to normal. The pandemic is still around, but we have very high vaccination rates um, and testing everywhere. So uh, it, life is very much back to normal. And so it's traveling and it seems everyone is enjoying the outdoors. The picture that you had there about Burj Khalifa, that is actually the real picture right now in Dubai in October. The weather is perfect. The light is amazing um, and you want to be outside. And um, we all are. 
it's definitely happening. Dubai is back, and it's been a co- roller coaster ride, but it's here. <laughs> and I mean, what what shifts? What shifts and changes? I mean, yes, I think obviously, you know, from a guest perspective, one, but I, I you know. I know very much in in your role, it's it's all about caring for you know it's caring for the team, it's caring for for, for your people. So I mean, what what kind of what shifts and change have you seen around employee preference and 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 the confidence with that? Because I know I know a lot of staff. Obviously, when the pandemic happened, you know they went home, um, mm-hmm. and and many you know many have returned, and I'm sure there were a lot of kind of question marks floating around um, around that at the same time. Yes, I mean, last year, March, uh, March 2020 wasn't the nicest month in Dubai and for anyone. And we all went home and, and didn't know what was going to happen. And I think that was everywhere around the world. Uh, we were fortunate enough to basically keep all our associates during the time other than those that wanted to go home. We are now a cluster of, I think at the moment, we have around 2,300 associates um, working with us. And um, the number is only growing. Um, it's been the things it's married is about putting people first mm. and the employee preferences right now is everyone um, is looking to have a job there is many many jobs out there and everyone is looking for growth opportunities within their roles as well um, and we're trying to facilitate that uh, a lot of people are moving around wanting to see new things um, and in a way we are lucky with that we have uh, you know seven or eight hotels and we have people moving from roles within our cluster um, and growing within that. So we have the opportunity to keep them working with us, which is great. We know them, they know us. Um, and uh, certainly hiring, like we've mentioned um, last week or yesterday, we've been yeah, yesterday. hiring last month for the expo. So our cluster is doing, um, we have two restaurants inside the expo, which are two of our own brands, um, Italian and a seafood restaurant. And we're also running a food court there. And just for that, we hired 250 associates last month, um, out of which uh, 180 of them were interns. Um, so uh, there's certainly opportunities out there and everybody is looking for, for staff, everyone. So 100, 180 interns all hired in, in one shot. That's 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 amazing. I mean, I think for for all the students and, and staff that are on the call at the moment and for those watching the recording afterwards, I mean, I think that just really sums it up, really. I mean, that's an extortionate number to be hiring at once. And, you know, you mentioned you mentioned about the contracts and seeing the smiles on the uh, on the faces. And there would have been a yeah. fair few smiles, I'm sure, coming back definitely with with all of that opportunity. No, 100 percent. I mean, no, that's 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 it amazing. A few sleepless nights, but yes. <laughs> yeah. I remember you said yesterday that kind of from the first of September for the first like three weeks, there was a lot of there was a lack of sleep that was happening. And I can fully empathize with that. That's for sure. 100 percent. That came with, until the 1st of September, we had a conversation in March, I think earlier this year, that, you know, flights were restricted, visas were restricted, Mm -hmm. different things were restricted, but very much from the first week of September, a lot of countries opened up, Dubai was able, you were able to come to Dubai again if you were vaccinated and different things, so, and with Expo opening on the 1st of October, it all had to happen within you know, four or five weeks. So it's certainly been a, a roller coaster ride, but uh, there is yeah plenty of opportunities um, and uh, experiences out there to be had right now, and in Dubai especially. Uh, on the on the roller coaster, you know, the, the the last eighteen to twenty months, and I mean, you know, I mean, you, you touched on it already with with everything that you were, you know, doing in March, and you know, we were, you even mentioned prior to the jump on the call. Now you're saying they've been cleaning rooms, and I mean, even yourself in that role, kind of rolling up the sleeves and getting stuck in and jumping on the phones and switchboard and and answering all those calls and everything. What would you say, you know, have you have you changed or altered that leadership style? Over, the, over this period or is it just kind of enhanced? Have you tweaked it? Have you changed completely as a person? I haven't changed completely as a person, I don't think, but something that has come very much to the fore in this, I think not just in our role, but leaders have to be what uh, my, my what Simon Sinek calls my human skills had to be altered a little bit. Um, and I don't like to call it soft skills, Simon Sinek puts it together as human skills. It's the touch because we're all working very hard. We all don't know what's happening. Um, at some point, things change rapidly from moment to moment. 
And for me, it's been important to that my team and me were able to, to perform. And for that, we need to feel secure. And for that, I needed to be there and show that we're all here in this together and we, um, we will get through this. And uh, we have. But for me, certainly leadership style and also what we as a learning and development manager with our managers um, over the last, probably from last February until August, we've actually been running more uh, emotional intelligence um, um, courses and, and just um, learning a little bit about, okay, put yourself into everyone else's shoes and work out how you, you can lead through that. Because it's not easy being a manager right now or a leader for that matter. We're all learning this together. Um, but putting, giving tools to um, our managers, including myself, on um, you know, how we can deal with the situations sometimes it has certainly been a focus of my learning and development role. And, the, and I guess the, the company's strategy is obviously for the imminent future. And I mean, we, we were on a, the first episode we did with, with Ahmed Rayner, who's the general manager at the Crown Plaza over in New Delhi. And I mean, he was, he was pretty frank in saying to us that in terms of, I think not so much, not only business planning, but he said that at the moment, they're pretty much running just on a month to month basis at the moment in New Delhi. He said that, you know, your, your forecast and budgeting and all of that being able to look you know, so far in advance, it's, you know, it's, it's not there at that moment in time. And because now this volume, and I guess the snowball, if we call it that, the snowball's literally, it's, you know, it's already grown so fast that you kind of have kind of got to juggle it a little bit before you're then able to kind of then move and say, okay, well, this is actually where we are going. So, you know, for, for Marriott as a, as a, as a company within, within the Middle East region, um, you know, are there, is there a kind of any strategies that are being put in place, any key developments as a group that, that you know, you'd be willing to share with us today for kind of what the plan is moving forward? I cannot talk for Marriott. I can talk a little bit for our cluster um, and certainly what the gentleman said before me, it's, it's very hard to predict or forecast. Um, it's the same with, that is why we're all looking for staff. We all knew that probably by October, if things go well, then business will be really back but nobody knows until something happens and what has changed a lot is everything is very short term um, you don't know the booking window has become really small and um, you know at the beginning of october we did not know that now we will be 100 percent in most of our properties we had an inkling but it wasn't booked it wasn't business on the books mm. so it's challenging to work out okay are we going to from my perspective, how many people do we need to hire? How many not? Do I go over budget, under budget? What's going to happen? It's very challenging. Um, from a strategy point of view, I know for our cluster, we just said, um, you know, go with, it will be busy um, and get ready for that. Uh, delivering a guest experience is very important still. And that is what we, sometimes in Hajar, I forget because I'm about delivering the associate experience, but our associates are delivering the guest experience. And that is certainly something that everybody needs to focus on. And it's very challenging sometimes because expectations are still very high. Everybody has going on vacation, wants to you know, spend their time and now they're finally able to go out. They want to have a good time. And for us then it's how do we make that time good even though that we might not have all the associates to deliver all those services that we usually would. Um, because there is a shortage in the market right now. So the strategy is focus on the guest and focus on the people. It's very much the, the um, make sure everybody is happy and how can we do that? Um, and it's not always easy. Um, from a strategy perspective, for us, it's we'll be busy and, and focus on the guest. But even, I think even... I think let's, let's kind of jump to back of house. I mean, you know, obviously where obviously where your your heart definitely is with with all the team and everything. I mean, you know, that onboarding process um, at the moment, and I mean, obviously, you know, arranging this, you know, obviously, because you know, I know in Dubai there's the staff, you know, as if if one goes there for their intern, they, you know, there's the staff accommodation. There's you know, there's that whole area as well, um, yeah. and I mean that in itself to you know get rooms together and then you've got to allocate people where you know who they're living with etc because obviously 
if they're frontline, generally I know it's that they share a whole home. Operation. Yeah, it's a whole it's a whole different kind of operation in itself. So I think even just kind of hearing about that as well, and you know, as as an, as a as as a perspective, you know, I mean, and you know, I've I've had a chat with quite a few of our students over the last couple of months, and I, I know when we, you know, we 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 spoke about it the other day, and we were saying that you know, with with how Australia, with what's happened with the borders, etc., and um, and I'll, and I'll kind of ask a question relating to that in a second, but I mean. You know, in terms of an employee experience, you know, how, you know, I think if I was to kind of say to you, kind of sell me the dream now of coming to work in Dubai, um, what, you know, what, what would the answer to that question be? The answer to that question would be, if you do come here, you're basically being looked after. Um, once I have sent you an offer letter and you are in Australia or wherever you are, we will actually fly you over here. So you don't have to pay for that ticket. Uh, we will provide you with accommodation and depending on what that is it might be sharing accommodation but we have uh, accommodation blocks um, and uh, you get transportation to the hotel you get your food provided everything is provided for you and you get a salary on top of that plus you do get experiences here that you will not get in many other places only in Dubai we have um, 33 Marriott hotels this is only Dubai in the UAE, we have, uh, I think it's close to 50. This is only the UAE, and there's plenty of opportunities. In Dubai alone itself, I think there is something around close to 300 hotels. Um, and we're all here to make a guest happy, but also gives you plenty of opportunities to grow. And like I said before, we, I and myself, we have, we will by next year have nine hotels in our cluster, and that alone gives you plenty of opportunity to grow your career. So in terms of you want to have a fast paced um, opportunity to see a lot of things at the same time, then uh, Dubai is, should be up there in a way and, and you get everything provided. If you don't like it, you can leave after a year. I did the same thing. I came to Dubai. I said, I will stay for a year, see what happens. And um, 17 years later, I am here. I started as a guest relations agent, and now I am hiring and recruiting for a cluster of two and a half thousand people. So the journey is endless. Um, there is plenty of opportunities here if you want to take them. Um, so that's how I would sell Dubai. And, um, and uh, oh, I just, oh, just keep going. I just, love, I just love the whole concept. It's actually one of my... It's one of my biggest regrets when I was working in London with, with Hyatt. And I, I actually, there was a point where I was actually, I was very much considering on actually going for a transfer to Dubai. And then, uh, and then my, uh, my rooms division manager at the time turned around and offered me a night manager role. So I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> I guess we'll stay here for a little bit longer. And then Australia yeah. a few years after that. So no, I mean, I, I think so. And I think, you know, you, you touched on it already earlier um, as well, where, you know, being in that cluster role and, and as a cluster of hotels. And, and I think, you know, Manning, I, I mean, you know, we, as a, as, a, as a careers team, we've obviously been telling all of our students, um, you know, how, you know, the roles are obviously diversifying. And I, and I know you've already kind of touched on that already, but that ability to obviously work, you know, across multiple different properties as well. And I'm sure, I, you know, and I think you touched on it as well a little bit earlier with that kind of, um, lack of staffing at the moment is I'm sure you're having kind of a lot of people at the moment that are actually working across different properties. So not only are you having a, a cross department exposure, but you're actually having, you know, a Western and an element, for example, are two yeah. very, very different brands, and two very different ways of working, et cetera, for sure. For sure. That's definitely, that's the, in a way, that's the beauty right now. And Right now, I'm sitting in Lumeridian, but I will be walking over to a loft, and it's very different service. It's, in a way, different, not type of people, but it's slightly different character as well. It gives plenty of opportunities. Um, and I think, like I said, I came to Dubai, and at the time, we were talking about Dubai as a tourism destination in tourism class. And I remember our teacher saying, we're not sure if Dubai is sustainable, they're doing all these things, and, but how is it? And I think we've even written an assignment on is Dubai tourism sustainable? And I came to Dubai by chance. Someone sent my CV instead of someone else's. And I got a phone call and I got a drop off out of it. And here I am. Uh, in the end, you don't know where life's journey takes you. Um, but it's the opportunities that you take within that. And like I said, you know, my first internship 
I did an internship on Daydream Island um, in front office. One of the things I learned, some of the things I learned there, they're still going with me now every single day um, in, in my career. There's one mistake I made on day one at checkout and I will never forget it. Um, but it's the experience that you gain with that and that you use over the different roles. And in our hotel, I can tell you our assistant director of food and beverage in one of the hotels, he started as a supervisor in our Busola restaurant. Um, there is career opportunities everywhere. Our GM started uh, in, as a banqueting waiter a long time ago. Um, our director of HR, she started in housekeeping. Um, it, it's uh, everyone, you know, it's the opportunities that you take and that you make yourself available for. Um, so I think hospitality in general is always exciting. In Dubai, it's just exciting because we are sustainable and, <laughs> and uh, we're making it work. And there is so many opportunities literally every month that it makes it quite exciting. And it's such a small industry as well. I mean, I know um, Ronan Ferron, obviously, who I know is one of the general managers of the property. Ronan actually worked with my father in Mauritius uh, at St. Regis a few years ago. So it's a very, it's there a very, go. very small, very, very small world indeed. It really, really is. Yeah. Um, and, I, and, and I guess kind of looping it around to what we were talking about earlier around the placement concept and, and work in general, um, you know, at the moment, in relation to Australia's borders being closed, we've got we've got about 450 students that are currently overseas at the moment. And that ranges across the subcontinent, Asia Pacific, Africa, and in South America as well. And I mean, for any of those students, you know, that, that are back home and watching right now, you know, what would you say to those students about working or completing placements, getting work back home, exploring those opportunities overseas in such areas, you know, I mean, even if, if I mean, again, we, the world is at different stages. I mean, I know, obviously, for example, you know, we take India as example. I mean, you know, you've just hired, obviously, all those interns, obviously, from that region in particular. You know, what, what would you say about exploring those opportunities to, to actually upskill oneself at the moment? And, you know, is, is that the right decision? I think it's experience is what makes your, makes your career. And like I said yesterday, we had a quick chat and I was uh, surprised to hear that some people are trying or looking to not do the internships because they want to wait for Australia to open. For me, I, I didn't, that wasn't in my concept. <laughs> um, it's, there's so many interesting places to go to. And for me, it's about the experience. If I look at CVs of people that want to start maybe in the, in the waiter, in the hotel, anywhere, um, I will look what experience do they have. And if it's an internship somewhere, then that will put you above anyone else that hasn't done that internship. And for me, it's, a, it's the experiences that you gain um, anywhere. It doesn't matter where you go. My, my first internship, I was a, a waitress in a, in a restaurant in Switzerland. And mm. I learned how to, it was a small restaurant. Nobody wanted to go there, but I had the time of my life. Um, and uh, I learned so many things from remembering numbers to punching that, you know, I still use that today. And it's, it's those little things that make me now. Um, it's, it's those experiences. And I always say, and I said to all those 180 interns, it's experience is very expensive, but you cannot buy it. Um, and my husband taught me that it's the, you know, you have to go through, even if something is good or bad or not what you wanted, it's the experience and what you make out of it that will shape your career in the future. So uh, for me is look for opportunities wherever you are. If you cannot travel right now, what is available there? Because it's even those little things that one, you will have them on your CV, but two, it's more about what you gain out of that. Um, so, and practical experience for me is sometimes not more important, but it is what you will need to use in your future career. Yes, it's important how to uh, do your spreadsheets and do your Excel sheets and how to write a business plan, but to actually apply that in, in that is what the internship is for in your internships um, during the time for me is, is more important than, um, or the whole picture than trying to finish my academics in a way. So go out there, wherever it is, whether it's Dubai or anywhere, I'd say go for it. 
I could talk. I could carry on asking questions for hours and hours, but I know we've. Uh, I know we. I know we, we. We did cap it for timing and everything. Lena, thank you so much. That's those are all the questions that I've got so far. Um, you know that I've that I've wanted to ask. Um, I'm going to open the floor. I'm going to open up the the, the questions now to to our panel, etc. Um, and the first question I actually want to ask is actually from our program director, uh, actually up at Lura, Dr. Fleur Flam. Um, and she's asked, you know, you, you were talking about EI a little bit earlier. She was asking what kind of diagnostic tools w w would you recommend um, for EI in that regard? I saw that question pop up and I thought, I wish I had the good answer for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we are now in the process, now that we have a little bit more breathing space to actually look deeper into this. Um, at the, we, I'm not using any tools. We have done last year, actually, before the pandemic, with some of our managers' uh, emotional intelligence questionnaires, and we're starting to build around a workshop for that, yeah. um, which is similar to a 360 review. But then the world stopped. Um, so that never quite happened. Um, we haven't really used any diagnostic tools. We just felt we had so many people not being able to cope and give you some tools that Marriott has a um, collaboration with Microlibrium, mm -hmm. which is an app um, that actually all our executive team is on. And we all know um, there are different uh, personality types on there. And we try to incorporate that in our briefings just to give some people some tools so it's very very basic right now we now have some breathing space to look into a few more you know proper trainings around it um, but we're not currently using any diagnostic tools because one of our one of my um, one of one of our success coaches actually at the, at the Kent Street campus in Sydney in the, in the middle of Sydney um, he also had a follow-up on that just kind of saying you know around that emotional intelligence helping colleagues and managers has that has that been quite a quite a big tool uh in 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 general kind of to get you through the last kind of 12 months as well specifically uh married as such sorry the question was if married as such has uh Sorry, the, que the question was kind of sharing about how the emotional intelligence, how it's actually helped the colleagues and managers. You know, is, is, has, has that been quite a, quite a tool that you've lent on over the last, over the last few months? Yes, um, from specific people. I think especially as the HR team, we were quite proactive. We had, you know, at some point everyone had some, I don't want to call it meltdown, but we all had our moments um, yeah. and being there for our colleagues. Um, and also from a HR perspective, we've, we have uh, one director of HR and two assistant directors and me. And it was just, OK, we need to be out there and helping people be available and have these chats um, to, you know, see the other side, put yourself into their shoes. Just let everyone understand each other. We're all under pressure. We're all under stress. Mm. So there's certainly... Um, a lot of strategies around it. What happens on the ground slightly is sometimes you run out of time, which isn't the right thing to do. Um, but it's from a HR perspective for us, it was certainly a job that we are available and we are around and we had meetings with different people and managers and associates just to overcome and have a conversation. Uh, it is becoming more and more important and opening up the discussion and making people aware of it has been our main focus. Okay, well, that's that, that's that's great, and I think yeah, definitely a tool that's very much been needed, um, and probably moving forward as well. Um, I've got time for I've got time for two more questions. Um, one's actually from uh, one of our students that use in Mumbai. Ashe, he's actually one of our Adelaide students uh, who's studying. He's at, he's based home in Mumbai at the moment, um, and he's basically said, you know, he's very aware that Marriott's a brand that cares for its employees, as we know. Um, and in terms of that hotel retention, so the retention of actually bringing people back, mm -hmm. what was what was kind of you know had was how, how did you kind of go about bringing those people back? If particularly if they weren't sure, and and even if I mean again, as, as many hotels have actually done across the world, where redundancies have been put in place, and then you know actually then getting approached to come back again. You know, how, how have you gone about kind of bringing that talent back to not lose it to anybody else? So Dubai is quite special in that place that everybody here, 90% of our associates live in our accommodation. 
And when this all happened, then they're not from here. It's not like you can just, there was no flights to fly them back to anywhere um, or, you know, they're, they're with us, they're part of the family. So we actually didn't lay off many people. And those that we have laid off, that was in the first month, um, I would say 80% of those are working back with us and the other 20% found something else somewhere else. Um, so we didn't actually lay many people off within our cluster. And during that time, we had uh, our hotel owners were actually, that's thanks to them, they paid everyone um, a minimum salary just to keep everyone afloat. And we had everyone staying in our accommodation, the food was provided, everything was provided. And we actually reopened one of our hotels in May, and then the second hotel in, um, in September. So we didn't have a very long closure. I mean, to close a hotel is, is already not, it's not something that we do as hoteliers. One of our hotels, there is no door lock on the front door. <laughs> so how hard do we? <laughs> and it's not an automatic door. And okay, we have a close, but we can't actually lock this door. A hotel is not designed to be locked. So um, we had a padlock in front. It was quite surreal in a way. So. Um, we were quite fortunate and lucky. Um, different. There's always merit. In the end, I'm speaking for my for my hotels. Yeah. And uh, in our hotels, we were quite fortunate. We had owners that supported us as well. And most of the people that were laid off, and it was many, they are working back with us. So I think for our general manager, that was one thing he wanted to make sure, and he has he has succeeded in a way. And it's something that. He is proud of, for, um, and that uh, we all worked very hard, hard towards. So, quite lucky in that sense. Oh, that's 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 great. Yeah, and I think it's, and again, it's. I think one thing about our industry as well is if you know if if there is that if that care factor is definitely there. Um, you know, you'll kind of want to go back home and inverted commas, as it were, 100%. And I, I think no, I think you summarised that very very nicely for us. Um, mm -hmm. The last question that I've got. Um, it comes from one of our students, actually in Lura as well, one of our undergrad students, David. Um, and he's basically made his inquiry that he's asked is it's very much the opposite of, you know, where we are going as an industry. And as, as aspiring hoteliers that all of our students are trying to be and obviously wanting to be managers one day, what three pieces of advice would you put on the table and say, take this because it will get you there and it will get you what you want? Ah, oh, the three pieces of advice question. <laughs> <laughs> Look, for me, uh, it's be flexible and be willing to try anything. Um, you can always say no, thank you afterwards. And it's being flexible in the sense that, uh, yes, I am a HR manager, um, but I also answer telephones and I can do that because I had that experience from my internship. Mm -hmm. um, I can wait tables if I have to, and we are doing a lot of outside catering and if we're short on people, I will still sell burgers out there. So um, being flexible and, and being open for opportunities, I think is one of my biggest advice. Don't be stuck. It's like, I have to do that. I never plan to be a talent acquisition, a learning and development manager, but it's things along the way that um, got me interested in it. When people supported me and said, well, you're good at it, so why don't you want to go in there? And then actually, I, my general manager said, I think you would be good at learning and development. And I said, no, never. And he said, well, go and try it for two months. And here I am. I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. And I'm making a career out of it. So be open and be flexible is, I think, one, don't be stuck on that one thing that you have in your head that has to happen. It's good to have that goal, but expect to go around a little bit as well. Um, that's one. <laughs> two. We'll just do two. We'll just do two. We'll, 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 we'll give you some leeway, but you can just do two. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that not being stuck on that is anything. And then to um, enjoy it and do what you enjoy doing. Um, if you do something that you know you really don't want to do, then there's always opportunity to change. Um, it's, uh, I think if anything, this last 18 months has taught us that uh, life can be unpredictable, make the most of it um, and, and look for your opportunities out there. Um, I don't think I have those three. No, that's <laughs> so, all good. 
that's all good no no no. we've we've gone we've gone over time as well but no lena thank you very very much um you know for the students that are watching obviously you know it's great it's great to obviously to be able to see a, you know another leading hotelier and especially that part of the world miss lena and i are very much in, in in touch and you know we've already spoken about potential opportunities towards the end of the year and that kind of thing and you know we'll, there'll definitely be more news in that regard there but no lena again a wonderful insight thank you so so much for your time uh, it's a lot for us to digest, um, but with so much promise and excitement to come for our incredible industry, it's, it's just wonderful. And, you know, again, we thank you so much for your, for your time today and for giving back. And it's always wonderful to, to welcome our alumni home, be it in the, the virtual world as well at the same time. Uh, but thank you very, very much for that, uh, for, for that, Lena. Thank you for your time and all the best to everyone. Super. So, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our third our third series session. Uh, we, we're looking forward to, to to next week when we're actually going to be heading off to Jakarta, uh, and we're going to be joined by Mr. Gaylord Lamy, who is the general manager for the brand new Langham that has just opened there a couple of weeks ago. Um, we wish you a pleasant end to the week. Stay safe, stay well, and we'll see you all soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.